Hey guys, it's Dave here. Welcome back. Thanks for watching as always. Today, I just wanted to make a really quick video taking a look at the big news around Virgin Galactic, really making big ways, waves in the investing industry, at least around space. Uh, their share price jumped by a massive 50% today. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I was absolutely shocked. And this really just reminded me of the days back in the meme craze when uh, Virgin was new to go public and they had a massive run up in the share price. I wanted to take a look at what's causing this. Is it similar? Are we looking at the start of another meme craze for a space stock and maybe other space stocks would catch on as well? Uh, let's take a quick look at what's going on. Before we do that though, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button down below. Every subscriber helps out the channel so much. I come back with videos very regularly around investing, especially in the space industry. And of course, always appreciate all the likes and comments down below as well. With that out of the way, let's jump into what's going on with Virgin Galactic. So uh, here we are, just a few things to show you. This is what I saw today when I woke up and checked the markets. We had Virgin Galactic jumping massively from around $4 per share all the way above $6 at the peak. However, we did kind of trail off throughout the day. We had a pretty steep drop towards the afternoon before ending only up about 16.5%. I stay only, obviously that's still a massive, massive day for any stock, but definitely not the you know 40 plus percent that we saw at the start of the day. So what happened, what caused this? Well, obviously you've probably already know the big news. They surged as uh, they announced that they're still on track for their first commercial flights this June. So very soon they should be starting their first commercial flights. And obviously people got pretty excited about it. If you're not too familiar with them, they're selling uh, suborbital flights on a space tourism plane. The the ticket costs for these flights are about $450 for your flight into suborbital, what some consider space, although that is still a matter of some debate. Um, and yeah, so I was just kind of curious uh, what was going on, why the stock market was going so crazy. I figured I'd check in with our old friends, Wall Street Bets, as well as a few other subreddits. <laughs> um, you know, love them or hate them, sometimes there is a lot of funny stuff on there, I have to admit. So I was just curious what the sentiment was around the stock and what people thought was going on and what people were predicting for the future. So uh, first one that I noticed here on Wall Street Bets, uh, big congratulations to this poster, uh, Daddy Slimane, I guess, uh, turned $600 into $19,000. That's a 30x on his investment using options, basically betting that the stock would move massively. And it did. Uh, I don't know how he really predicted that today was the day or you know, I, I think we all knew that the flights were going to resume fairly soon. That's another reason why I was so shocked by this move. I felt like we all knew it was coming. Uh, there weren't any more further delays expected, at least that I was aware of. So to have this massive move... Um, Surprised me a little bit, to be frank. But anyway, 3,000% return. Congratulations to him. Um, you know, do I think everyone should do this? No. Uh, he got either incredibly lucky or he had some sort of information. Definitely good for him, though. Congratulations to him. Uh, I wouldn't suggest, you know, buying more call options on the stock right now. We did even see it drop off throughout the day. But, uh, you know, fun, fun to see this stuff sometimes. And then uh, there's the actual Virgin Galactic subreddit. I figured I'd just take a quick look, see what's going on in there. Uh, a little bit different than the Rocket Lab subreddit, you know, talking about different technologies and stuff and different news. We have a lot of more memes on <laughs> the Virgin Galactic subreddit. And this is kind of what I was wondering about. Are we returning to the meme stock days where who knows how far the company could go uh, disconnected from any kind of real valuation metrics. Uh, yeah, so here we have we are back, burn the shorts, uh, rip shorties and people, <laughs> you know, making fun of the shorts sitting under in the fire. Are, are we ready? Uh, talking about how mentions for the, uh, the this subreddit has gone up, you know, over 2,500 percent. 
So a lot more people talking about Virgin Galactic. It, the sentiment is clearly increasing. And sometimes when uh, the retail, more gamblers than investors get a hold of these things, the stock can go absolutely wild as we've seen in the past with many others. This one I thought was pretty interesting. We have a, I guess a live streamer looking at his investments as the stock jumps after hours during when the news is announced. Let's uh, take a quick look at what he was saying here. My position, and uh, I believe that the stock will, as I've said time and time again, go through seven bucks on its way to $100 a share. Not because it's worth a hundred bucks, because it will trade to a hundred bucks. This is about to explode. Wow, a hundred dollars per share. That's uh, really high expectations. I, I don't. I'm personally not buying the company. I didn't realize there's that many uh, people live streaming their investing. Uh, let me know if you'd be interested in me doing some more live streams. I've done a few. I always find them kind of fun to interact back and forth with viewers in real time as opposed to having comments several hours go by and that sort of thing uh yeah good for him i disagree with him on holding this company long term but uh i'll never you know i'll never talk down about someone who made a profit because clearly for whatever reason they were right at least at that time at that moment they did make money uh, whether they bought for the right reasons or the wrong reasons, whether it moved because of the reasons they expected it would move. At the end of the day, they they were right and uh, they made money. So good for them. But going forward, I still would be very hesitant to purchase this stock. Uh, just a few more memes here. You know, let the FOMO throw flow through you. Uh, FOMO, if you're not familiar, is fear of missing out. Uh, you know, <laughs> that causes a lot more people to often jump on the bandwagon when they see a stock starting to rocket and you, you don't want to miss it. And often that's exactly when you buy when something is too high and then it crashes. Uh, it's happened to me before as well. I've definitely given into FOMO in my earlier years investing before I really got a bit more disciplined about it. Another point of interest on Wall Street bets, just a anecdotal thing. We do have the mentions of SPCE rising all the way to number six on the list behind only SPY, NVIDIA, Tesla, Palantir. So those are a lot of big names that people often trade options around very regularly. And SPCE is now right up there with them clearly att attracting a lot of attention in the space investing space <laughs> but perhaps not for the reasons i would love now i just wanted to share a few uh, items showing kind of why i'm a little concerned about the company why i won't be investing in them so uh this is from an article i did kind of pull similar numbers myself and make charts and stuff but i figured i'd just you know share through the article for you guys here so uh the cash burn problem we all I think know about if you're paying attention to the company, they're burning a lot of cash very quickly. And just because they're returning to flight uh, doesn't mean they're gonna be you know, breaking even right away or even anytime soon. So if you look at this quote, we can see that Virgin Galactic burned $139 million in cash in Q1. Uh, still describing their cash position as strong, but I mean, every company says that all the time. And uh, they do have $874 million. So one thing I will say for them is that they did raise a ton of capital and that gives them some time. Although uh, if they continue burning a hundred plus million dollars per quarter, not per year, but per quarter, uh, that will dwindle very quickly. You can do the math on that. So uh, this quote here, if Virgin Galactic were hypothetically able to follow up a successful revenue generating commercial space flight in June with similar flights twice a month, every month through the end of the year, so twice a month until the end of the year, their total revenue from these 13 flights would be $19.5 million. And remember guys, they're burning 130 to 140 million per quarter. So 19.5 million is really not enough to make a big dent in that cash burn. 
This is actually roughly equal to the amount Virgin has been predicting that their cash burn will slow down over the next couple quarters. So that could be where that's coming from. And then, uh, however, to completely offset 120 to 130 million in cash burn, the company would need to be flying closer to 80 flights per quarter. That would bring in about $120 million in revenue. So that's just break even. Obviously, if you want to be, you know, really profitable, you would have to do even more than that. So now we're talking a ton of flights at $450,000 per ticket. You go up for, I don't know what, an hour maybe. Um, you're not really in orbit. It's suborbital. But, uh, you know, some people call it space. So you will feel that weightlessness. But for me, not really worth $450,000. And also, I've just never been very big on the space tourism business in general. It's never been uh, as exciting to me as some other satellite and launch businesses. But anyway, they would need two flights every three days rather than two flights every month is what we're looking at right now. So really not that close to breaking even and if you do the math on burning even say 110 million dollars if you expect them to make say 20 million dollars a quarter and then they're now burning 120 110 million they still only have you know seven or eight quarters left so maybe two years unless they can really really ramp up how much money they're making how many flights they're having and i would argue also r massively reduce their spend i think this problem is not solvable simply by increasing their revenue i really think they have to kind of tighten their belts get a little bit more lean here and stop this massive spend we're seeing it's it's, it's really huge and then I just figured I'd take a quick look at Main Street Data. There is an affiliate link to this site in the description down below. If you're interested, they do have a lot of advanced financial charts around investing and uh, specific companies, kind of like hypercharts used to. So we can see the trend, obviously the, the spend, the operating income in the negatives is getting lower and lower. Obviously they had one big uh, quarter there, but the trend has still been spending more and more, not getting closer and closer to profitability, not really tightening their belts and cutting their spending, which is what I think they should be doing. Uh, similar thing for net income, obviously, because they don't really have any income at this point. This chart is something you don't see every day, uh, gross profits. So obviously gross profit in blue, operating expenses in red. Uh, we see you know a few slivers here and there. I don't even know. I mean, they're not really operating commercially, so I'm not entirely sure where they're getting these little slivers of income from. But hopefully starting next quarter, we should actually see some revenue from launch and you get a better sense of what that's going to start to look like. Still really not enough to uh, account for this $163 million in operating expenses. And yeah, similarly cash flow going down. Uh, one thing, as I have said before, they've done a good job about raising capital, so they're not in immediate danger of going bankrupt. But to do that, they have had to uh, raise additional shares, so dilute current shareholders. You can see the shares going up as well as debt and stuff like that. Here's a good chart of share issuance I always like to take a look at if I'm investing in a company that's not profitable yet because sometimes you don't really realize how much you're getting diluted uh, if you're just looking at the stock price and you're looking at how close they are to profitability and you don't realize how many shares are getting issued here. So we have Q3 2021 uh, dilution of $500 million and then as well, some more in Q3 22 and Q1 23. A lot of that is probably compensation for management and stuff like that. So that's what's going on with Virgin Galactic. Pretty wild stuff. So you have, the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to buy it? Do you think it's going to rock it up again like it did back in 2021-ish? Uh, for me, no. I think this company is a scary one to invest in. I do wish all those folks on those various subreddits I checked out all the best. From what I've seen, there's a mix of some people just hoping to burn the shorts, some people just hoping to ride the wave. And there are some people that really believe in the company and believe in their future prospects. And those are the people that I really hope the most succeed, but I just have so much concerns around the company, around how fast they're burning cash, and uh, you know how much demand is there really for a $450,000 ticket to suborbital space on a plane? 
can they really expand enough to compensate for that burn rate? To me, it's way too scary. I wouldn't touch it. And then the other side of things you might ask yourself is, well, if you're not, if you're convinced it's going to go down over the long term, should you short it? Well, uh, it's really scary to do that too, because with these meme stocks, uh, sometimes <laughs> the shorts can get burned. Uh, you know, retail investors will drive up the stock trying to make you have to buy back your shares and lose a ton of money. And that's kind of their whole game plan. So it's really scary. You can see it jump crazy amounts on these short squeezes. I've seen it before. And for me, I'm really just going to uh, stay back, not touch it either way. If I were to take any kind of a position on the short side of things, it would have to be an extremely long term put like two years out is the maximum you can do. But uh, I, I'm not really looking at doing that at this point. So that's what's going on with Virgin Galactic today. I wish those shareholders all the best, especially those who uh, are holding it for the long term and just really believe in the company and the future of uh commercial space flight and want that to succeed but i don't think the financials can justify it and i've seen one of richard branson's other space companies already go bust and hurt a lot of retail investors i really hope the same thing doesn't happen to investors this time around in a couple of years but uh to me it looks like it could go that way and uh, it's pretty scary so let me know what you think down in the comments below is there something i'm missing some reason why you think Virgin Galactic will become extremely profitable and, you know, command a much higher valuation. Are you a shareholder? Are you shorting it? Are you just watching on the sidelines like me? Let me know down in the comments below. If you haven't already, please hit that like button and I will see you in the next video. Hope you have a great day. Bye for now. <music>